the incidence of neonatal cholestasis is 1 in 2500 in approximate numbers. Cholestasis is defined as a reduced bile formation or flow resulting in the retention of biliary substances within the liver. And it can be related to a defect in the intrahepatic production or the transmembrane transport of bile or it can be a mechanical obstruction preventing the bile flow. The third component, the obstruction component is the most important to pick up early and uh, because biliary atresia is the commonest reason for this obstruction. As the bile is not excreted in the stool, we get acolic or pale stools and obstructive or cholestatic jaundice. The kidneys do not filter unconjugated bilirubin because it fits avid binding to the albumin and the presence of bilirubin in the urine, as I discussed earlier, indicates the presence of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So a dark urine uh, in the absence of dehydration, obviously, you have to think and it stains the nappy typically. The bilirubin will be seen on the nappy. So you can ask these questions to the mother while eliciting the history. And I mentioned that it's very important to diagnose biliary atresia early because surgical intervention before two months correlates with a better long-term outcome. Despite the best of efforts in many countries, even in the developed world, the average age of diagnosis and treatment is around 60 days. So the causes, this is not exhaustive. Obviously, we can classify as intrahepatic and extrahepatic. Extrahepatic is uh, classified mainly by biliary atresia. Then you have the other minor conditions like mucus plugging, polydocal cyst and Caroli's disease. Uh, intrahepatic, allegal syndrome, and the metabolic conditions we'll discuss later as well, and these infections may contribute. So biliary atresia represents the most common cause. Of course, these charts would be different from what is given in most of the textbooks because as time evolves, uh, the diagnosis of the more important, rarer conditions has started increasing. So biliary atresia is in 35 to 41%. So this would be the range 25 to 40% in the olden days as well. However, we have the progressive familial intrahepatic cholestasis or PFIC, which is seen in 10% now, which was in the idiopathic category previously. In the past 20 years, our knowledge of this condition and the ability to do genetic analysis to diagnose this has improved. And we will be discussing this later on. Preterm birth, related, mostly TPN related cholestasis is seen in 10%. Luckily, most of these are benign. Metabolic and endocrine conditions like hypothyroidism and uh, Hypoadrenalism or panhypopituitarism can contribute in 9 to 17 percent. Allegal syndrome in 2 to 6 percent. Infections in 1 to 10. Mitochondriopathies. Biliary sludge can happen where you have hemolytic diseases. It can be hemolytic anemias in the family like sickle cell, uh, or it can be uh, sepsis related hemolysis. You have idiopathic causes still in 13 to 30 percent. Remember that. About 20 years ago, this was around 40-45%. So this has come down significantly because we are categorized.